Welcome to Her Remarkable History. Remember, to support our channel, please subscribe. The Sinister Life of Jane Boleyn Throughout the Tudor period, there were many men and women who fought for favour in the eyes of the King or Queen. At Henry VIII's court, many people were desperate to become liked by the infamous King, and they would tread on the toes of others to gain promotion. Henry VIII even executed two of his closest friends and advisers, Sir Thomas More and Thomas Cromwell, due to other courtiers digging their talons in to have them fall from grace. But there was a woman who was well liked during Henry VIII's court, and she married a balloon boy who seemingly had the world at his feet. But following the execution of her husband, Jane Boleyn's life took a desperate and tragic turn, where she was left penniless but somehow managed to claw her way back into the king's court, all before she helped his fifth wife commit adultery. Jane Boleyn's life was certainly dark at times, and she is also alleged to have possibly testified against her own husband, which resulted in his execution. But what is the story of her sinister life? Born Jane Parker in the year 1505, she was the daughter of the 10th Baron Morley Henry Parker, and Alice St John, the great-granddaughter of Margaret Beauchamp. Because of this, she was a distinct relative of Henry VIII and was his half-second cousin, so she did technically have some royal blood. But she was born and raised in Norfolk, and her family were seen and respected members of the upper class who were also wealthy. As a teenager, Jane was sent to the royal court before she turned 15 and she joined the household of Catherine of Aragon, Henry VIII's first wife. She went with the royal couple to France during the huge pageant of the Field of the Cloth of Gold, and it's believed, though, that Jane was an attractive young woman, and she had good looks and also was considered a prosperous young lady at court. It was likely that she would marry a well-off courtier, but in the late 1524, she married a man who would go on to become the brother of the Queen. Jane married George Boleyn who was the brother of Anne Boleyn. The couple were married before Henry VIII became infatuated, but Anne was already captivating many people at court. Jane and George were given a mansion at Grimston Manor in Norfolk, and she later became known as Vice Countess Rochford, or Lady Rochford. The couple became incredibly wealthy, especially following the rise of the Boleyns and Henry VIII's obsession to make Anne Boleyn his second wife. The couple were also given the Palace of Bewley in Essex, and they lived here the most. They had some expensive renovation work done to the house, including the construction of a tennis court and a huge bathroom that had hot and cold running water. They furnished it with the finest goods, and it showed how Jane and George were incredibly wealthy and popular in the eyes of the king. Through their marriage, it also made Jane the sister-in-law to the Queen Consort when Henry VIII did marry Anne, as well as the aunt of the future Queen Elizabeth I. But their marriage is often seen as an unhappy one and a miserable one. Some historians have claimed that George was a player at court, and as he was a rich and handsome young man, he slept with many different women at court and had a number of affairs. This would have upset Jane greatly. But it's believed that Jane did dislike George's sister Anne, the Queen, out of jealousy. However, she did unite with Anne Boleyn especially when attempting to banish one of Henry VIII's mistresses from court in 1534. But this instead resulted in the banishment of Jane Boleyn for some months. However, Jane fell from grace heavily alongside the Boleyn family. Henry VIII's eyes had been captured by Jane Seymour, a lady-in-waiting of Anne's. He became infatuated with her and was convinced that Anne could no longer provide him with the son he wanted due to a number of miscarriages. Because of this, Henry VIII asked Thomas Cromwell to get him out of the marriage and Cromwell devised a scheme in which Anne Boleyn was accused of incest, adultery and treason. She was accused of sleeping and plotting with five men, including her brother George, Jane's husband. George was arrested in the May of 1536 and was sent to the Tower of London. It is believed there was no truth in this charge, but still George and Anne were tried inside the Tower. Jane was mentioned at the trial once. However, a rumour emerged over the centuries about Jane Boleyn actually testifying against her husband and Anne Boleyn, and some claimed that she actually gave information that resulted in their deaths. 
One historian claimed that she testified out of pure hatred that she had for Anne Boleyn and the fact that George, her husband, preferred to spend time with his sister rather than his wife. However, this informed many people that Jane was in fact a terrible person, but on a more modern account of Jane it says, For when Cromwell sent for Jane, he already had much of what he needed, not only to bring down Anne and her circle, but to make possible the king's marriage to Jane Seymour. Faced with such relentless, incessant questions which she had no choice but to answer, Jane would have searched her memory for every tiny incident that occurred to her. Jane had not been quick to tell tales, but she had buckled under the pressure of relentless questioning, and it was her weakness under interrogation that gave her future detractors happy to find a scapegoat to exonerate the king from their heinous charge of callously killing his innocent wife, the ammunition to maintain that it was her evidence that had fooled Henry and destroyed Anne and George. Nevertheless, Jane Boleyn was made a widow when George Boleyn was executed on Tower Hill on the 17th of May 1536 in front of a huge crowd. He spoke a long speech and was executed by axe shortly after. He had been condemned to die based on falsities and the fact one of the other men accused with her had already confessed under torture. But the fall of the Boleyns after George and Anne's execution was brutal and sharp and Jane suffered. Jane may have witnessed the executions of both of them, however, the lands that the Boleyns had built up and what George had forfeited to the crown. She became incredibly poor and was shamed by what had happened. She was allowed to use the title Vice Countess Rochford, however she could not benefit from the family fortune of the Boleyns. She left court for a number of months after the executions, and she tried to secure some money for herself. She was later given an annual pension of £100. This was a lot less than what she was used to, but it was enough to maintain her status. She returned to court and then became a lady-in-waiting to Jane Seymour, the king's third wife. She was allowed to stay inside rooms in the palace, along with a number of servants to help her. She was catered for with good food paid for by the Queen, but after Jane Seymour's death, the King married Anne of Cleves. However, this went all wrong as Henry did not find her attractive and claimed that, in the July of 1540, Jane Boleyn may have testified that Anne of Cleves said that she and Henry VIII had not consummated their marriage. This left the King with the evidence he needed to annul his marriage, to then marry a teenage mistress that he had taken Catherine Howard, who then became his fifth wife. It was this marriage and meddling in it that led Jane Boleyn to be executed. She remained a lady-in-waiting for Catherine Howard, but rumours circulated around court about her shortly after marrying King Henry VIII. It was claimed that she was not a virgin when she married Henry, and had slept with other men, but then shockingly claims emerged that alleged she had an affair with one of the King's closest courtiers and friends, Thomas Culpepper. Culpepper and Catherine got along very well, and the letter was found where Catherine stated her love for Culpepper. The pair had been sleeping together a number of times, allegedly, and it was claimed that Jane Boleyn had been helping arrange these liaisons between the two of them behind the king's back. She was helping the queen commit adultery against the king, and when this emerged, Jane Boleyn was arrested and detained as she was accused of arranging these meetings. She was sent to the Tower of London, and she was interrogated and questioned heavily by the King's advisers. Inside of the Tower, she had a breakdown, and was then declared insane in 1542. She was a shadow of her former self, and because of her insanity, she could not stand trial for her role in the Queen's adultery. But regardless of her mental state, Henry VIII sentenced her to death. He even brought in a new law that allowed the insane to be executed, especially for Jane Boleyn. She was condemned by act of attainder and was due to be executed on the 13th of February 1542 alongside Queen Catherine Howard. Catherine Howard was led to the executioner's scaffold inside of the Tower of London's walls first and on Tower Green the axemen took her head clean off in one swift blow. The scaffold was very different to the previous execution of the Queen, Anne Boleyn, 
as it was not covered in black velvet, but simply hay to soak up the blood. But after Catherine's body had been collected and taken from the scaffold, Jane Boleyn was then led out. She too was to face the executioner by axe like her husband did, but was granted the privacy of a private execution, unlike her husband. Jane was taken from her lodgings to the scaffold, and she spoke briefly before kneeling in the blood of Catherine Howard. She was calm despite being declared insane, and one witness stated that her soul must be with God, for she made the most godly and Christian end. Another stated that Jane gave a long speech and apologised for her many sins. She knelt down at the block. The executioner readied himself, and again in one simple blow from the axe, Jane Boleyn's head was taken clean off. The executioner that day was very skilled and performed his brutal job well. Jane Boleyn's body was then taken into the Tower of London's chapel and buried close to Anne Boleyn and George Boleyn. Jane Boleyn is considered in history to have been a rather sinister figure. Throughout her life she did involve herself in some scandal, in particular in helping the Queen cheat on Henry VIII. This was a shocking revelation, especially due to the fact she had been a lady-in-waiting to many of the King's wives. But it's not known why she did this. She may have seen Catherine Howard's marriage to Henry VIII as inappropriate or wrong, and she may have wanted the much younger girl to find love herself with someone more suitable. But Jane Boleyn's life, despite being in her mid-thirties when she was executed, was incredibly interesting. Thank you for watching and to support. Please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.